Welcome to AstroVenture, the DSLR Astrophotography Channel. Hey there, AstroVenturers. Welcome back. If you're new to this channel, my name is George, and this is the astrophotography channel for DSLR, or mirrorless camera bodies, combined with the lenses we already own and a simple star tracker like the Sky Guider Pro or the Star Adventurer. Now, today's episode I'm really excited about because it turns out it looks like there may be another comet headed our way, and comets really get me excited to capture because they, they tend to be a once-in-a-lifetime visit, and... The last one that came through in uh, 2020, Comet Neowise, oh, absolutely blew me away. And I chased that thing for weeks until I finally got the image that I had in my head. Now, the comet that is coming is Comet C202103 PanStars. Now, PanStars is a reference to a telescope. And the PanStars telescope first spotted this new comet back on July 26th of 2021. And since it's been traveling in, they've been able to really solidify and confirm what they were looking at. And so as this one is coming towards us and heading towards para, perihelion, that's a tough one, perihelion, as it's coming towards its perihelion, eventually we are hoping to see it in April of 2022. Now, at this point, it, it's really not visible. It's too far out there. It doesn't have a tail, but it is inbound. Now, the big question will be, will it survive? And the perihelion is in April of 2022, and at its closest point, it will be the same distance as Mercury is. And when you're a dirty snowball traveling through space and you approach something as hot as our sun, uh, it's kind of scary, and we're still too far out to know, uh, you know, what are its odds of survival. And we have had previous comments that that just didn't make it that we expected to, and and some that uh, we don't expect to, and sometimes they survive. So we'll have to be watching. Now the closest that it gets is April 2022, at a distance the same as Mercury, and then as if it survives the perihelion and it swings around and gets its closest to us, that will be on May 8th of 2022 with an estimated magnitude of 5. And when it is traveling, it will be crossing through the constellations of Air <coughs> excuse me, Aries, Taurus, Perseus, and I'm going to butcher this one, Camelopardalus. <coughs> I'll put the spelling on the screen for this. Uh, anyway, it's going to be passing through. So what does that tell us? That tells us that when this comet comes through, it is going to be located in the west to north region of the sky, and that's what we're going to be working with. And based on where those constellations will be, it's going to be low on the horizon. So this one could be uh, tough because you're going to be shooting through atmosphere, low you're going to want to try and find dark skies because we tend to have those uh the, the city glow closer to the horizon so it's not you know up above us in that clean area so it's good that we're tackling this one now to give you a bit of heads up in planning and i really encourage you take a look at the program stellarium and remember we're looking at the April May time frame. So you'll be able to set Stellarium to your own location. You'll be able to locate these uh, constellations. And with that, you'll be able to get yourself an idea of exactly where it is that you need to get yourself positioned. Now, with getting excited, hopefully, about this new comet, I want to take a look at some of the shots that I did for Neowise and kind of talk you through the process that I did to finally capture the dream photo that I had in my head. Now, this first image that you're looking at right here, this was shot on my Nikon D500. It was on a 300 millimeter lens at F4. 
Uh, exposure time on this one was a little bit over a half a second and I was working with an ISO of 640. Now, this image is an ugly image. I, I didn't even process this image, but the point and purpose of this image was just to locate, just to find the comet. And I encourage you that when we get into the window and we know if it survived the peri perihelion, if we know that it survived, get out there and start shooting. Try and locate it, try and find it. Uh, Note where it is that you found it in the sky as well as the settings that got you going. That's the biggest challenge. Once you've done that, you can work with it. Now, the comet will continue to move across the sky and towards and through these different constellations, but it makes it so much easier once you find it that first time. Now, this next image that you're taking a look at here, uh, changed cameras. I was now on a D, excuse me, a Nikon D850. This was shot on a 50 millimeter lens at f1.8 and the exposure time for this was two seconds and it was in a, at an ISO of 2000. You could tell by all of the light across the horizon that this was a late night, early morning, the sun was getting ready to come up image. And I just wanted to capture this. Uh, this was shot up at uh, a little over 9,000 feet and I wanted to capture that city below I wanted to capture the comet in the last moments before I lost that final darkness of the night. As you can see, the sun is starting to come up. Next image, this one here. Now I have at this point really established where the comet is. I know the settings I wanna use and here's where I started to get creative. Now on this particular image, again, Nikon D850, 300 millimeters f4 exposure. This was a tracked image. I did this one off of my Sky Guider Pro and it was 121 seconds long at an ISO of 400. So using the tracker, I was able to get that ISO down to get that cleaner image. And the other beauty is, is that you'll notice on this image here, there is the two tails coming it off, off of it. That beautiful yellow golden tail and that's the, uh, the vaporizing of the comet. And then there is, and I don't know how well it comes through on YouTube, if you look above that tail, you'll see that blue tail that comes straight off of it. And that's the ionized gases off of the comet from the sun. And so I really love this image, came out beautiful. And this is one of the images that I had in mind to capture. In hindsight, I actually kind of wish that I had shot this a bit wider and was able to bring in more. But I don't know, it's always one of those challenges, what do you wanna do with it? Now, the whole time that I chased this comet, because like I said, comets really excite me, they're, they're rare visitors. And as I chased this comet over the weeks, I spent time uh, sleeping up on mountaintops in the cold, because at 9,000 feet, even though it's warmed up down in the valley, it's not so warm up there. Uh, I spent many nights on the sides of highways all over the place chasing this down. And I, I captured some great images, but I had that perfect image in my head and, and I just wanted it. I had to have it. And so literally I chased this thing for about three weeks until finally I got to this image. This is my dream image. This is what I had in mind. Now on this particular image, I shot this with the Nikon D850. I was using my 70 to 200 millimeter lens. I set it at 70 millimeters. Uh, on this particular lens, I'm very happy with uh, how sharp it is at 2.8. And so I shot the lens wide open, my exposure being three seconds. And because I wasn't tracking on this one, uh, I was at an ISO of 3200. And with this one, it, it was, uh, and, and I know the, that ISO, that's, that's pretty high up there. But the thing was, is that I didn't want to get the star trails. I really needed to have some sensitivity to catch that last bit of golden light coming across the water, the reflection of the island. And so that's what pushed me to these settings. And so this is my dream image of Neowise. And it felt so good to be able to accomplish that, that rare time that you can truly get the image that's in your head onto your camera and onto your camera and then right in front of you. So while this uh, this incoming uh, 
Comet may not survive. Comet C2021003 pan stars. Well, it may not survive. I'm giving you the heads up now so you can start planning because if it does survive that perihelion, you're not going to have a lot of time. With the fact that it's sitting low on the horizon, it's in the west and north, and with the rotation of the earth, it's going to continue to push it off. You're going to have a small window. And so I want you to be thinking ahead, getting prepared, and have it all together so that the moment we all hopefully get that good news, it survived perihelion, you can go, 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 and hopefully you can capture that, that dream image that you have for this hopefully surviving and arriving comet. Well, until next time, I wish you clear skies, uneventful nights. We'll see you soon.